Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how I modified the opening temperature of my thermostat for my E65 BMW. This was a bit of a trial and error video. It's more for informational purposes and it's definitely not scientific. It's just some of the steps I followed and I thought it would be useful. The E65 is notorious for coolant leaks. I suppose one of the main reasons is the coolant runs pretty hot. The normal opening temperature for the OEM thermostat is 105 degrees. So those owners of this car know that you can easily get 107, even 809 degrees Celsius, especially when sitting in traffic or when the car is just idling. So what I did is I purchased a generic thermostat off Amazon and it was advertised as having an opening temperature of 95 degrees. Well, you're looking at it right now. It definitely does not meet that specification. In fact, it's pretty much the same as the OEM opening temperature. So either it wasn't calibrated or it was an incorrect advertisement. So this is the thermostat which I got. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to modify this generic thermostat and try and lower the opening temperature. Yes, it's pretty crude what I'm going to do, but uh, nevertheless, here are some ideas for you. Just for your reference, the cost of this generic thermostat was $26. And I am aware you can buy thermostats that are advertised at 90 degrees, albeit quite expensive. But I decided to see if I can get that done on this generic one. See if I could manipulate that opening temperature. So here goes. So the first thing I'm going to do is just remove all of this. So there are a couple of screws here. This is a T30. You'll need to remove one, two, three, four. Then these clamps, one, two, and three. Then there's a plug here. I've just opened the cover. Now I just push it at the back, lift that off. Now first open here on the sides. And then I gently twist this, keeping in mind there is a pipe at the back here, which I just removed. Right, here is the thermostat. So I just want to remove the plug. This is the map function. So I can remove this plug. I just lifted the clip and then I could remove the plug. Now I'm just going to release the pressure if there's any pressure built up, keeping in mind that one cannot do this job if the car has recently been driven. The car needs to be cool. Now I'm going to reuse the antifreeze because this car has recently had a coolant flush. So I've got a bucket and then I've got these plastics. These plastics are airtight and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the plastic by the pipe capture the old antifreeze, put it in the bucket, and then reuse it when I put the thermostat back. That means I'm going to put this bag underneath the thermostat. And when I release that pipe, all excess antifreeze and water is going to go into my bag. Right, I'm going to loosen these screws here. This is a size 10. I'm not going to take them off, I'm just loosening them. Right, I'm now taking the bag and I'm putting it underneath the pipe. Right, now I've blown this out to the blower and I've wiped it down because I don't want any dust and sediment to get into this bag. Now there's my bag around this pipe. Right, so now I'm going to release this pipe. So I'm just lifting the little clamp here, the spring clip up. And all I need to do is pull this pipe downwards. There's no twisting. It's just that way. Yours might be pretty tight. And then I've got the bag here to collect the antifreeze, which I'm going to reuse. I'm not going to pull it out. I'm just going to allow it to come out a little bit so that antifreeze can start to find its way. There we go. So it's just seeping into the bag. Right, so there's the antifreeze, which I'm now reusing. Now I'll bring the bag back and do it again. Now I'm moving this pipe out of the way and just letting the remainder of the antifreeze drain into this bag. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the thermostat and let the other side of the thermostat drain into the bag. Right, now the antifreeze is draining from the other side of the thermostat into my bag. Right, there is the antifreeze and distilled water mix, which I managed to recover, and I will put that back in. I did lose a bit, probably lost about half a liter. Now it's time to modify the thermostats. Right, this is the unit that came off my car. This was advertised at opening at 95 degrees, but when I tested it, 
in my car as I showed it opens at 103. This is the original one which was also made for the car. This is the one from BMW. There's the original part number. This one opens at about 105 degrees. So there's not much difference between this generic one I got of Amazon and the original in terms of the opening temperature. I thought I was getting one that opens at a lower temperature because it was advertised at 95 degrees, but when I installed it, it was 103. I also boiled them and tested them with adding some current and they opened exactly the same. I couldn't find any difference between these two. Right, so this is the generic, the one that I'm modifying, and this is the original. So this is 105 degrees. This, I've also added a voltage and current source to try and initiate the opening a bit earlier because I cannot get the temperature in this pot above about 80 degrees. Here is my bench supply. I'm going to set the voltage at exactly the same amount so it's supposed to be 12 volts and then i can also current limit for now i'm just going to boil it without adding the supply even though it's boiling one can see that the temperature is not quite 100 degrees now what i did is i provided them with that additional supply uh, that would actually be the map function and what it's doing is it's heating up that cavity through that electrode and uh, that's why they're both opening they open pretty much the same i'm sure if i had a balloon there i would be able to see there's some small difference but actually they pretty much the same even though the one was advertised at 95 degrees so they also opened the same amount the one difference was that the one opened earlier and believe it or not it was actually the oem one that opened earlier so i just start with the one side and then i open this side and then i go to this side and then this side. If you are going to try to remove this, try to remove this when it's a bit warm because there is a seal in the middle there. So now I'm going to try and make the opening temperature a bit lower. Now here's an older one which I've cut. Now why I've cut it is I wanted to demonstrate what's going on inside here. And just having a look here, this is a solid piece. I originally thought it was made up of two pieces, but as you can see, um, when I cut through it, there's no seam. But what I think is happening here is there's a safety feature which is built in. And I wonder, and I'm just speculating, if there's another type of wax or a wax with a different temperature coefficient or something that happens over here. This particular thermostat was stuck in the open position. And the only way it could be stuck in the open position is if this needle in the middle there could not go all the way in. So something had almost expanded and then locked open in place. So it was kind of like that. So in order to make this open at a lower temperature, one could do a few things. The first one is to change the spring. Now that is quite hard because you would need to open the end here. Maybe you could drill it out and then put a rivet and rivet back in. So that would be one option which I don't recommend actually. And then the other option is to reduce the size. Now if you have a look at that you can see there's quite a lot of space in there. And I've already been playing around with this. I have reduced the size by hammering it and I've squashed it. Now that would create more pressure to be built up in here and therefore it would open at a lower temperature so that's also one option reducing the volume inside that will also open the thermostat at a lower temperature and then another one is to possibly build this up a little bit there isn't a lot of additional space on the top of that and putting extra things on here runs the risk of it jamming inside especially if it falls off and gets caught on the side for example, I have these neodymium magnets and I thought of just putting one almost like as a shim there. I suppose you could heat up the shaft and solder on an extension to that element, to that pin. I'm just a bit wary of adding additional objects into the wax area. The other option is, is to add more wax in there. But this is not simply candle wax. Candle wax is different. Here's my test with candle wax. It's very sticky. Well, this is the wax that's inside the thermostat. For example, if I heat it up, you'll see that the candle wax is very runny. So 
the minute the candle wax gets heated up, and it's also got quite a low temperature, by the way, um, it heats up even at 75 degrees, it starts to soften. By 85 degrees, it is melting a little bit. So it's very runny. While if you look at the wax that came out of the thermostat, it's a little bit different. Firstly, it sticks together a lot more. Secondly, it's hardly as runny. For example, if I try and run it, it's not runny at all. So if you could get some of this wax, you could add a little bit and then do tests to see at what point the thermostat now opens at the correct temperature. So adding wax is an option. Right, so this is the older one that I had and all I did is I scraped some of the wax and there is some extra wax which I've managed to get from my older unit. So I'm now just going to put that in to the new unit to reduce the opening temperature because more wax means more pressure. So this is an uncontrolled experiment. I'm kind of just doing it by guesswork. And just to note that this shaft over here is actually longer than the OEM one that came off the car. For example, if you look at that, and then you compare it to that. And also if I measure from there to there, on the old one, it's 46 millimeters. On the generic one, it is 48.5. Now notice how I can't close this now. Notice how it is sitting a bit proud there because all that wax is now blocking the tip of that shaft. So this would actually need to heat up to let the wax move around. Right, now this is the generic, the one that I got as a replacement. And this is the original one. So this was opening at 103, this was opening at 105, according to the temperature at my engine. And when I did this test, they pretty much did the same things. Now what I've done is I've added a little bit more wax into the generic one to see if I can lower that opening temperature. Now at the moment, nothing is happening there. Uh, at the moment it's boiling, but neither are opening. As you can see, they're both closed. Now, unfortunately, I can't get this above 90 degrees and if I show you with the thermometer for example it's about 70 to 75 degrees when I measure using this infrared thermometer now these thermometers are not extremely accurate but I am measuring there on that shaft and uh, I'm definitely not at the 100 degrees or even 90 degrees so neither of these are going to open but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some current to try and assist it but the success will be that the one should open more or earlier than the other so now I'm going to provide a little bit of current so here's the bench supply and I'm going to current limit them. I'm only putting it at 0.5 amps each. So that means it's not getting the full 12 volts. I don't want it to be at maximum. I just want to see a small change. Now the moment of truth. Immediately I'm seeing the generic one. Look at that. That is opening now while the OEM one is not opening. That's telling me I've lowered the temperature. It never did that before I added the wax, so you can see that it's opening earlier than that one. How many degrees? That I don't know. The only way I could find that out is if I could somehow heat this water to a more than 95 degrees. There, okay, the OEM one has opened slightly, but look at the difference there. That's the success. So that's opened quite a bit compared to that. Now, if I put it at full, now I'm going to set them both to 12 volts. And there you can see the current is pretty similar. 710 milliamps versus 690 uh, voltage is the same. Very small differences. I can set the current to be identical since the current is what's causing that heat rather than just the voltage. Right, so both have the same current at the moment. Now let's look at how much these diaphragms have opened. Right, so this is the generic and this is the OEM. So there we can see that it has opened more. I'm going to leave it like that just for a minute. Right, so the generic one has opened quite a bit. Uh, it hasn't gone past that point, even though I've left it on for a bit. And now I'm going to turn off the power supply and just see how fast they close and if they do in fact close all the way. So now these can actually come off. 
even in the closing cycle, we can see that the OEM one is closing quicker, meaning its opening temperature is higher than that one. So we can see that that one is closing slower. So the question is, how many degrees cooler? And that's the problem. It's, this is just guesswork. I'm just posting this video just out of interest. Obviously, it's not scientific because I would have to do this and measure how many grams of wax and also what type of wax. Not all wax is the same. They've got different coefficients for their temperatures. Okay, so the next step is to put this on the car and see what the car measures. Right, so now I'm just going to reconnect this pipe, just clean it with my finger, make sure there's no dirt inside there. Just put this pipe back on. Uh, there is a line there which aligns with the pipe. All the way. And then check it, check that it's seated. That's it. Right. Right, now I just need to refill the coolant tank with coolant. If you're worried about sediment getting back in here from uh, having siphoned it from the engine, I'll just put a little filter. So I'm just putting a little filter in there just to block any sediment that may have fallen into my bucket or that came from the engine. And I'll just pour this in. And I'm just taking some water and just cleaning here because I don't want there to be any residue of antifreeze, otherwise it'll get confusing for uh, tomorrow. Okay, I just sprayed water inside there, obviously block that, don't get any water in there, because what will happen is there's some antifreeze that is sitting on the plastic cover, bottom cover that's at the bottom there. And what happens is in the morning, you'll come to your car and you'll see antifreeze on the floor and you'll think, oh, it's leaked. So I've cleaned it and I've now made it just water. Water will evaporate much quicker and also I'll be able to tell if the color is green then I know it's a leak because I've removed all the excess antifreeze. Right now you could put your air filter back and connect it there and now I'm going to idle the car for 15 or so minutes while the coolant reservoir is open. So I'm going to now open that and I'm going to let the car idle. Right so I'm going to let this idle for about 15-20 minutes. Most important is put the warm air on in your cabin so it gets through the other circuit on that side where it warms up the air for your cabin. Otherwise you might have air in that side of your system. Right, so this is going to take a while to uh, get all the uh, air out and to warm up to operating temperature. Right, I'm here in the menu and there you can see the temperature it's 95 it's been idling for a good 25 minutes i have closed the coolant cap at the moment uh, it was open for a long time but now it's closed right so i even took the car for a drive and i could hear my radiator fan when i came back and i've had it idle for more than 20 minutes it drove for about 10 minutes and it stayed about 96 97 it actually did go to 99 and what i noticed is this cooling system does need to be bled properly and what i noticed is when there's air inside you do get these quite significant fluctuations in the temperature so what i did is i tested it over the next few days and I noticed that the temperature started to go even lower. All right, so what happened is I did check my coolant every morning and it did drop twice. Thereafter, it didn't drop anymore. Very important is to set the cabin temperature high to allow the coolant to uh, go through the entire system. And uh, it has stabilized now. So I've noticed that the temperature uh, fluctuates from about 90 to about 96 and even when I'm parked at a traffic light or if I'm in traffic it, it hovers around that amount there are some overshoots to 99 degrees especially if I just switch off the car and it seems to overshoot a bit but uh, while driving and while stationary it's uh, below 100 so I'm definitely seven degrees cooler what I did notice is the foster I drove it actually got a bit cooler so um, there, I hope that is helpful and I know this is very unscientific, but uh, just for your reference, thanks for watching and cheers.